Hey, so a while back I uploaded a video that showed you how you can remove the screen from some printed material that you've scanned in using just the um, built-in Photoshop filters. And this video is going to be the same sort of thing except using a very good freeware filter. Um, now the filter does require the 32-bit version of Photoshop. You should have that. It does come with most versions of CS and CC. I'll go into that uh, into the detail of that in just a minute. But first I'll just show you the, the the effectiveness of the filter. So here you can see I've got my scanned in material. You can see this, the printer screen is quite harsh. You can see the sign and magenta dots there. And here is the end result that's been filtered, which I think you'll agree is pretty impressive. It's got a very good sort of balance of detail and um, removing the sort of screen from the image at the same time. So very impressive. And you can get this filter from this address here. I'll put a link in the video description. And you just click this download link here, which will give you this zip archive. If you just extract that, and that'll give you this folder full of the filters. Now the filters need to go into this directory here, which will be your program files x86, which means it's 32 bit. And then the Adobe folder, Adobe Photoshop. I'm using CS6. If you don't see this um, version of Photoshop in your program files, you could check your original installer because it may have had the option to install the 32-bit version as well. Um, anyway, so the plugins then go into the, the filters, sorry, go into the plugins folder here. As you can see, I've already copied those into there. So once they're in, obviously launch your version of Photoshop 32-bit. You can see my 64-bit version is still in my dock there. So let's go to a new one and I'll show you how the filter works. So first thing to do is I'm going to press Control J twice, making sure I've got that layer selected. All that's done is duplicated the background layer tw two times. Um, I'm going to switch off the top layer because we'll come back to that in a bit. So I make sure I've selected this bottom layer. Go to Filter, Fourier Transform and FFT. So take a little while depending on your computer. I'm just going to zoom out and make sure your channels palette is open that'll be under window and channels and we're going to just click on the green channel only now this is the weird bit basically what you're going to do is go through and mask out all of these stars apart from this sort of central star um, and i believe this works by um, calculating the frequency of the pattern in the image and by removing all these other stars we're going to be sort of eliminating the other um, interfering noise if you like from the main screen that we want removed um, just to show you actually the brush size I'm making sure the hardness is 50% I found this works quite well and the size obviously you pick whatever size you want depending on the size of the, the stars that are projected on here I don't worry too much about like masking out everything but um, obviously this <laughs> in this particular image there's quite a lot of stars so I'll go through this as quick as I can. You can I've seen other people use um, different size, uh, different shaped brushes, some that are sort of star shaped, but I found that that actually gave me more of a dotty result. So this I find actually works better and it's easy as well because it's just a built in brush, you don't need to be adding anything. So um, I think I'm almost there. Um, just make sure covered most of the bases. When we're done, if we just then click on RGB, and you should notice that most of the contrast, I've just spotted two actually, there's one there and one there, most of the contrast is gone and all the focus is on this main central star. I'll just double check that again. Yeah, that looks good to me. So once you're back on the RGB, the full selection, go to Filter, Fourier Transform and IFFT, which is going to inverse what we've done take a little while again so now we're going to go back to our um, original layer there I'm going to switch that on I'm going to change the color mode of the layer and actually pick color as the option and then we are actually going to because this, the, this is the original here so it will still have the screen we're going to blur out some of the original um, screen um, I find 1.5 is a quite good amount for this image like I did experiment with 1.25 but there was slightly more screen shown through but again you can do that however you want so okay that and now this is sort of up, um, adding to the layer below if you like so if I zoom in now you can see that the result is pretty good if I go to the original here and we go down to the core screen and we can see just how much of it has actually been um, 
removed, I just make these all match so you can see a direct comparison. I mean, especially on this girl's arm here, the result is just really impressive. Um, and that's pretty much it. You can fiddle about with some of the options, experiment with the way uh, you're covering the dots, which I found. I did try quite a few things. Originally, I was avoiding the the central sort of um, cross, but it, it worked out better to mask out any ones around the edges as well. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of it. You notice that it seems a little bit, uh, if I zoom out, this looks a bit darker and a bit more contrasted compared to the original. Although I think that's actually just purely because of the, the way the dots are being aliased on the screen. But you can, of course, flatten this image and then go in and start messing about with your levels if you really want to bring a bit of the contrast back or however you want. That's it, really. Um, hopefully this has been useful to you. If it has, please give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please subscribe. And that's it. Thanks for watching.